Now remember the other case that we talked about was when the image was at infinity. When the image is at infinity, where is the, I'm sorry, I misspoke, when the object's at infinity. We also talked about when the object's at infinity, where's the image then? And that's kind of just the reverse of what we just saw here. Uh, because if the image, if the object's at infinity, then all the incoming light rays are parallel. An object that's in, at infinity is so far away that all the light rays are basically parallel by the time that they get to you. So they're all P rays. So they're all P, oh yeah, that's good. They're all P rays, which means they all go out through the focal point. So again, these are just the reverse of the things we talked about before. So th this now we're starting to see why people focus on the, fo on the focal point again. Uh, because there's some interesting things that it, has to, it does with our limiting cases. Yeah, so let's do another thing. What would be the magnitude of the magnification in this case? Image at infinity, object at the focal length. What would be the magnification? divide something infinite by something, that's just infinity. <clears throat> so the magnification would be infinite. That's just another way of saying there's no image again. Yeah. Infinite magnification again means no image. Let's go back to the chart with all the different parts. That would be a good thing to tear out or have someplace. Make a clean copy of. So we talked about last time how if you put the object here, the image is the same size as the object. Yeah. Then we talked about when you put it here, you get infinite magnification. But that's what we were just talking about on the board. There's no image, uh, and we're in the very center of, the center of magnification, so this is infinite magnification over here, which basically means if you're very close to here, it's very big. Okay, um, so here we have infinite uh, magnification, which again is another way of saying that there's no image. Yeah. All right, and how about down here when you're ready, when we put the object at infinity? Well, we know when we put the object at infinity, the image is at the focal point, and what would be the magnitude of the magnification now? Zero. Because now we have infinity on the bottom. What does that mean? It means it would be a point. Yeah. Well, this is common sense. If the object is infinitely far away, you're hardly going to be able to see it. This is what happens when you look at the stars, basically, right? The stars are so far away that you can approximate them as infinity, and that's why we only see a point uh, for the stars. So this is just the common sense. So this here, uh, so when an object infinitely far away, it's going to be shrunk to basically a point, and that point is going to be at the focal length. Um, and when the uh, object is at the focal point, there's really going to be no image, and these are the reverse of each other. So it seems like there's a bunch of problems that he assigned that were kind of going back and forth between these concepts about the focal point we didn't talk about before. So it's good that we're uh, getting into this now. Okay, so there's really a lot of ideas behind this one little uh, headlight thing. Okay, but now I think uh, we've got that. So if you look at the answers, it goes at the principal focus, and then you have to give a little explanation. Uh, or a diagram. So here's the diagram. Uh, everything is coming in through the focal point, so it's going out uh, parallel. Okay, I think we settled that problem.
it's the s prime negative s prime over s equals h prime over h. And I mean, I don't equal ten, but so you're something. Um, so I, I keep his negative in there. All right. If you looked at the choices, you would see they're all positive. And what that means is we can just focus on magnitudes. So this, in the magnification, the negative sign that's in front of the s prime, um, should I just treat that? I, I shouldn't make that magnitude. Well, yeah. Uh, we've seen many cases where the official formula has a sign, but where we're better off just focusing on magnitudes, using the dot to indicate that we're focusing on magnitudes, and then just figuring out the sign on our own if we need to. Um, remember that the sign here just tells you whether you're upright or inverted. But we already can tell that from whether it's real or virtual. Right, we're right? looking at a height, so it's not going to be negative. And we're, all, and we're just looking for the height here anyway. If you look at the choices, they're all positive. Sometimes if you're trying to do a mathematical proof, you need this version of the equation. If you're trying to do a mathematical proof, but if you're just trying to crank out a number, you might as well just focus on the magnitudes uh, and then if you, know that the, uh, if you know that it's inverted, you can kind of put in the sign later if that's relevant. So, all right, but in this case, um, he's just, all the answers are positive, so we might as well focus on the magnitudes. So you just get 0.4 times 0.08 divided by 0.2. So the height is 0.6 meters. Oh, they, he did, though, that he found the magnification was 2. So then he knew that it was double. That's a little more intuitive. Yeah. Okay. But you way, got the same answer as you? Yeah. So image distance is 0.4. The object is 0.2. So we know the magnification is 2. Uh, what does it mean when the magnification is 2? That means the image is twice as big as the object. Um, so the answer was, uh, oh. Oh, I, I put in the wrong number here. This was supposed to be 0.08 high. So twice 0.08 would be 0.16. And we're just figuring out the magnitude here. He was just going for the magnitude uh, of the height in this case. That's all we needed. The key thing is, um, what's the relationship between these two variables and these two variables. So s prime over s is equal to. If you focus on magnitudes. Yeah. If you focus on magnitudes, the ratios are equal. So here we knew that the ratio of the image, we knew that the ratio of the distances was uh, 2 to 1. We knew the ratio of the distances was 2 to 1, so the images of the sizes must be 2 to 1. That's the most intuitive way to look at this. Since the image distance is twice as big as the object distance, the image height must be twice as big as the object height. Okay, that didn't give you, give you problems. Good.